Hi everyone, um, Mr. Cookit here again, and I just want to talk to uh, everyone today about superfoods. Um, I mean, there's a lot of advertising going on right now about superfoods. Everything's a superfood. What is a superfood? What can superfoods do? Um, and I just thought I would discuss and just kind of get some of the mystery um, taken care of when it comes to um, these types of foods. So a superfood um, is basically a food, usually a fruit or vegetable, <gasps> surprise, that is really good for you and is really packed with nutrients. Now, depending on the market, certain um, farmers, certain, no, not farmers, certain industries will advertise their food either as a superfood or just to get it out because they just want to sell a product. Like, let's say, oranges. Okay, so the orange industry isn't about selling an orange as a superfood. They just want to sell oranges. Whereas, say, the pomegranate, okay, or prunes, these aren't really popular fruits. So to make them more appealing to people, they call them superfoods. Now, are they great for you? Absolutely. They're, I mean, the health benefits in, in pomegranates and prunes uh, amongst all superfoods are very good for you. I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying is that you're not going to do better for your body by eating a <clears throat> pomegranate or a prune or whatever else is labeled as, as a superfood super over an orange or an apple. They all have different kinds of nutrients. They have different amounts of nutrients, but n not. it's not right to say that some have so many more nutrients than others that they should be on a different classification of fruits and vegetables. The deal is, not everybody gets enough fruits and vegetables anyway, so let's not try and reclassify to make some seem better than others, when in fact the only reason for doing so is to make more money for those industries that don't sell that many normally. Look how big pomegranate juice is now. It's everywhere. Why? Because they started advertising and selling it as a superfood. I saw advertisements in New York City on the subway claiming that there's more antioxidants in peanuts than broccoli. So whether that's true or not, that's irrelevant. The point is that these industries want to sell their product. So they're going to take what might be a little bit of a truth and blow it up. Because so was an antioxidant. It's just things that don't allow oxidation in the body. So peanuts may have more of that. But what's in broccoli that has so much more than peanuts that's better for you than having an antioxidant? an antioxidant in your body. Um, that, that's just, these are just things that should be obvious, but it's very confusing out there. And their um, industry does a really good job of, of confusing people. Um, so I wanted to get it out of the way and just tell everybody that, you know, the, uh, the deal with superfoods, um, in, I, a little tidbit that I find interesting is that uh, oranges and pomegranates, I used that example earlier, I know, but um, they have the same amount, or I think, no, I'm sorry, oranges have more vitamin C than pomegranates, um, which I think is interesting because pomegranates are labeled more as a superfood than oranges. Um, anyway, the point is, get your fruits and vegetables. Don't worry about discriminating between some or the other because pomegranates are going to be more expensive because they're marketed that to be more desirable so they're going to be able to charge more for them and you're going to go broke faster so you're not going to hurt yourself in buying more oranges or pomegranates and you're going to save some money too um just you know a little tidbit um of info there also uh so when you get down into breaking down fruits and vegetables i just thought this should be you know interesting to know also there's things in fruits and vegetables called polyphenols and flavonoids. Not important. These things 
um, do beneficial things for your body, basically. So we don't know exactly what it is in these things that make them good for you yet because nutrition is just very, very new. So to say something like red wine can help reduce the risk of heart disease in women, may help, whatever. The reason why that's said is because of a flavonoid called resveratrol, which is in the skins of red grapes. Now, red wine is macerated, mushed together with the skin. That's why it's red. You can have white wine from a red grape. You just don't mash the skin. That's why it's not red. That's why it's white. Because the juice is going to be white. Clear. Um, so... My train of thought back. Um, the um, okay, here we go. The resveratrol um, that's in red that, that that can be found in the skin of red grapes, which is also in red wine, has been shown to have health benefits. Okay, so resveratrol is in grapes, just natural grapes, not wine. But industry, marketing, sales, just how things work. Okay, so moving forward. You, as a woman, to say, want to purchase more red wine because, you know, you have a glass every week, whatever. You want to bump it up a little bit because you want to get the benefits of, of, of resveratrol that may benefit you towards heart disease. Great. Okay. You would be an alcoholic before you would have any benefits from the resveratrol in red wine. You would need so much of it to have that benefit that you'd be detrimented by drinking so much booze. But they look at the one little thing called resveratrol and they can see what it does in larger doses and then they make a claim about what resveratrol is in, not the ingredient itself. So do you then go purchase resveratrol pills? No. Why? Because we don't know why or what it does that makes it good for us. We aren't sure yet. So there's no point in purchasing a pill form when it most likely, and in most cases this has proven to be the case, not going to do the, have the same benefit as when it's with the food. I think there was a study in Sweden where um, they consume a lot of beta carotene. So hardly any of them had like eye disease or something or cataracts or something with the eyes. So us in America, wanted to capsulate beta carotene and distribute it to people to, you know, as a preventative measure for eye diseases. Okay. They actually ended up getting sicker faster because of the toxicity levels of how much beta carotene they were consuming. And even though they were consuming the same levels in Sweden, in food was why they had the lesser risk of disease. You can't just capsulate one part of something that is good for you and think it's going to do the same thing. There's other things in food that work with the vitamins and nutrients that are naturally in it that make it good for you. So uh, that's why so many nutritionists are m more into telling you to eat fruits and vegetables or eat your nutrients over taking multivitamin. Now, if you just can't do it for whatever reason. A multivitamin isn't the worst option, maybe like three times a week just to, you know, give yourself some backup if you want it, but it should not be the source of your nutrients, the source of your nutrition. That's not cool. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this up in about 10 minutes. Um, I'm not going to let this go on too, too much longer, but to wrap it up, superfoods, lie just eat your fruits and vegetables don't worry about classifying them even more down and and you'll end up spending more money um have faith that the things in them are good for you and don't try to find capsulated versions of them because they're not necessarily going to do what the food type nutrients are going to do and eat well choose well and be well